a very good evening to you, Grenada, and the rest of the world. Boy, let me tell you, it feels weird, weird. Sitting here at this time of the night to launch Good Day Grenada, Good Day at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, this uh, was a very spontaneous change we had to make. Uh, a decision we had to make yesterday morning because uh, there's some construction taking place here and uh, the program yesterday for those of you who were with us you know that it was just horrendous a lot of noise a lot of noise a lot of noise so we decided no 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 it's my understanding this is probably going to continue for the next two months or so so I thought you know what Pshh. Let's take a leap and move the program to 8 o'clock in the evening. So, yeah, we might even change the name, eh? If you have any ideas, oh, I'm open. I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to share with me. Nevertheless, we're together, and uh, let's get right to it. Tonight, ha, we're going to look at drive-through corona screening in South Korea. Yeah, man, <laughs> they're going all out, they're going all out. I think you, uh, you're, you might have a chuckle, but uh, you'll see that the people in uh, South Korea are taking this uh, virus, this epidemic, real seriously. And uh, you'll see how they're screening. You know, in North America, you pull up to a McDonald's or a Wendy's, drive through well <laughs> that's that's how they're doing the screening for the coronavirus uh just wait a few seconds you'll find out what that's all about then tonight to wrap up the week we have a really funny little piece for you um i have captioned it here crooks are everywhere some more lovable than others <laughs> that's just a tease that's just a tease wait a few seconds and you're gonna find out what that's all about and I, I guarantee you it's gonna put a smile on your face okay and then mr. Brian Pitt mr. Brian hey I see he's showing up there already mr. Pitt is gonna be joining us as well so uh, hang in there for that I'm sure he's gonna let loose as he normally does on a Friday he too probably feels kind of weird uh, doing it on a Friday night rather than uh, on a Friday morning. And uh, right after that, to wrap up tonight's edition, the evening edition of Good Day Grenada, we have got the national, well, it's, it's coming in right now, so uh, we hope to have the national report for you. So there's your rundown for the next hour or so, okay? Now, a very creative way of testing for the virus in South Korea. Folks, this is serious stuff, but I want you to look at it very carefully, and you'll see how seriously they're taking this thing in uh, certain parts of the world. I hope we're doing likewise right here. Take a look. South Korea has more coronavirus cases than any other country in the world outside of mainland China. Fever? No fever? I'm healthy? This is drive-through coronavirus testing. Oh. Every expense is uh, subsidized by government. I think they, uh, the other country, they can learn from Korea. We are driving out of the South Korean capital right now, out of Seoul. We're equipped with all sorts of things to, to, to protect uh, and stop the spread. Um, masks, rubber gloves, and I think we have goggles in here, right? South Korea has more coronavirus cases than any other country in the world outside of mainland China. Now, the number of cases in this country have surged. The authorities have come up with an innovative way of tackling the challenge. This is 
drive-through coronavirus testing. It's a service that this city, Goyang, outside of Seoul, is offering for free to anybody who comes in here. You drive in with your car and you go through a series of stations to get the coronavirus test. We're going to do the test. Great. Okay. And? Thank you very much. Okay. Turn right. Komsomida, thank you. There's the first stop. I've gotten uh, my hands disinfected. The authorities say the advantage of this is it speeds up the testing process and, crucially, it limits the exposures of potential carriers to the brave nurses and doctors who are on the front lines of this public health crisis. Do you think this is more safe than testing at a hospital? Uh, yes, I think so. I think so because in the hospital, so many patients are crowded that the, most of the patients have their uh, another disease. Yeah, I think I am very safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not afraid of uh, exposure from the patient. All right, now we're going to the next stop. Temperature? Is it okay? 36.3. Fever? No fever? I'm healthy? Maybe. Uh, I came from Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Uh, I was in Daegu for one minute at the train station, off the train and then back on. And in Seoul, I met one member of Shincheonji and shook hands with him. And now we're going to number three, station number three. The authorities here say they can test more than 300 people a day through this drive through center. I'm now going to do the coronavirus test. Mask down. Whoa. Okay. Oh, that's really uncomfortable. Whew. Wow. That went very far up my uh, nose. Okay. Okay. All finished? Thank you very much. That's it. We've done the test. In the U.S., it's just beginning in the U.S. Do you think there are any lessons for countries as they face this threat? Every expenses uh, during this examination are uh, subsidized by government. But in the U.S., the patient should pay a lot of money uh, to taking the test. <coughs> so it's a very different condition. But I cannot say, you know, this is adaptable to U.S. because the medical uh, system is totally different. Actually, payment system is totally different. Uh, we've taken the most aggressive uh, actions to confront the coronavirus. Uh, they are the most aggressive taken by any country. On January 31st, I imposed travel restrictions on foreign nations who had, and anybody that had been to China. Experts now agree that the decision to move so quickly, despite a lot of opposition on that decision, was uh, a wise one. It greatly slowed the spread of the virus to the United States, and it really uh, gave us time to do some of the critical moves that we've done. We knew this was coming. We knew this was coming. Back as far as January. They didn't even begin to prepare the testing kits. 
I mean, th this is something that's, uh, that's kind of elementary. The administration was slow to react to, to in the very beginning. I don't know if it was just denying the science or what, but they were slow to react. In Korea, we are really uh, hard working to, to uh, remove the corona, to actually stop the uh, spreading of corona uh, one night mm -hmm. in Korea. But we hope that it works. I mean, now, if I was suspected of being more symptomatic, I would be sent to a temporary quarantine to await the results, but as the system works right now, I'll go on with my life and then the authorities can reach out to me with the result of the test. Do you think other countries can learn from this example? Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, the, in America, uh, McDonald's and Starbucks, they have drive through So, you know, this is another example of drive through So I think they are. Uh, the other country they can learn from Korea. Well, well, see what I mean about how seriously they're taking this? But you know, today, uh, today I sat for a few minutes uh, wondering, boy, what if this thing is already here? Uh, would they really tell us? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to toss that around with uh, Brian when we get to him in just a few minutes. But, uh, boy, it, it seems inevitable. I think it's just a matter of when, not if, it's going to show up on our doorstep. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Now, a little funny bit here, just before we get to Mr. Pitt. The world today is filled with crooks. You and I know that. Let there be no doubt about that. Some you may never wish to see a second time. But guess what? There are some, I bet, you, like me, just came out. I'd like you to meet some of the latter and have, have a chuckle, chuckle at it as, as well. well. Check, Check this, this out. out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs>
That was actually Brian Pitt you were looking at. That last, uh, that last little sequence there, that was Mr. Pitt, believe it or not. Okay, folks, it's now, let's see here, 16 minutes after the hour. Let's take a very quick break here, and then we'll get to Mr. Pitt. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Together with you, our customers, we energize our community. Together with you, we energize our economy. We are working together to give our nation a better tomorrow. With you, we energize our future. Together, we energize our nation. Thank you for partnering with us as we energize our spice island. Renlec, energizing our Grenada. So, break number one. Time now, my dear friends, to say good evening to the goodly gentleman. Uh, how are you there, Mr. Pitt? I am great, uh, George. Um, are you hearing me? No, I'm not hearing you. Why not? You don't want to well, hear me? that's good. No, I'm hearing you. Okay, so, Mr. Pitt, I'm just going to ask you this question. Do you, do you feel as weird as I do sitting here tonight at this time of the night saying, good day, Grenada, huh? Yes, yes, George. Um, and I must, I must apologize for the poor lighting. Um, my house is not a studio. So, so my lighting is not perfect. So I would imagine that uh, because the sun's hiding, hey, listen, man, there's a nice big moon coming up out there. So uh, maybe later on, uh, later on this month, um, you'll be better lit up. Now, if, if we're going to do this in the night, maybe I should come to your studio. I would be delighted, Mr. Pitt. I would be delighted. Anyhow, good to see you, Brian. So where do we begin tonight? You know, I'm going to take in front. I'm going to take in front. Brian, the coronavirus. Are you willing to wager how much longer it's going to be before it finally shows up uh, on our doorstep? Well, George, it is probably here already. Um, and that is my fear. You know, we, we have been told that we should be careful where we get our information about this virus. Um, there's a lot of information on social media. Um, so people need to get information, um, credible information. And I don't know that the Ministry of Health is putting out credible information. Um, do we have kits to test for this virus? Um, is there a process uh, that we can test people? Could people go in and get a voluntary test? I mean, these are all questions in my mind, you know. Um, I, because of my age, I'm in the vulnerable group. You know, George, so I would like to know um, if I have any symptoms um, to show for this thing. Where do I go to get a test done? And do I have to pay for the test? You know, these, these are all questions that the Prime Minister did not address the other night when he talked, when he, when he addressed the nation, he did say that he was going to, I think there's a $2 million figure that they're going to put on the table to, to, to help in the, in the, in the testing and, and the whole process. But I, I, there are more questions than answers, George. 
And I think that's what has uh, a lot of people a little bit uneasy. One of the things that caught my attention is that, you know, on one side of their mouths they're saying, forget about masks, they're not really not that important. And on the other side, here, we're bringing masks in. Who do you, who do you believe? Well, let, let me tell you one of, let me tell you my fears, George. I had a friend who a couple of weeks ago for surgery. The surgery was supposed to be done on a Sunday. He went in on a Sunday and there were no beds. So he had to go back home. He went back on another day and there were no beds again. So he had to go back home. Eventually the surgery got done and after the surgery, he was released to go home. So there's obviously a problem in the hospital with beds. If we had to quarantine people, where would we quarantine them? Did they say, I do, am I missing something here? I have not heard anything regarding the location of the places where people are being quarantined. But at the same time, do you think it would be a wise idea to publicize where these people are being quarantined? I think it would be, George. And this is why earlier I was calling for a CARICOM approach. Now, I, I was happy when I heard Mia Mockley the other day in a, in a um, televised kind of press conference out of Barbados talking about a regional approach. But um, it seemed to me that these local, these governments in the individual territories seem to be doing their own thing. Brian, to, to be very honest with you, I believe a lot of these governments are just winging it. Um, because look, even even the WHO and the CDC, I believe that they they're not absolutely sure what's going on. Well, well, George, let, let me another example. I understand that there was a cruise ship that was not allowed to dock in Barbados, but it went to Saint Lucia. There was another ship that was not allowed to dock in Trinidad, but I think it went to Barbados. So they don't seem to be a uniformed approach to um, to this issue. And I am not comfortable. I'm not comfortable at all. Well, you know, if you uh, watch or read the uh, press releases coming out from CARICOM, I mean, CARICOM is working in a unified manner to handle this. Uh, you're telling me you're not buying into that? Well, I, I can only judge, George, by what I see happening on the ground. Why would a ship not be, gain, not, not, have, um, uh, uh, not be allowed to dock in Barbados and it docked in St. Lucia? Why would a ship not dock in Trinidad and dock on another island? So, so, I mean, they are saying one thing, but they're practicing another. You know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think we all should be a little concerned, George, uh, because... I suspect that this virus might already be in the Caribbean. I think there was a case in one of the islands up north, wasn't there? Do you hear me, George? Yes, I am. And uh, I was just uh, checking out a couple of comments here. First of all, Margaret says, Brian, there is no need for you to go and request a test. If you have no cold or flu-like symptoms. Well, George, to Margaret, if I, for example, want to travel, now I understand um, there were some people traveling around this region recently. Um, I have a friend who left Barbados to come here, and they weren't, they weren't screened in Barbados. They were screened when they got here. Suppose I want to travel. I want to make sure that everything is okay with me. Um, if I have to travel in two weeks or three weeks, it, do I just go to the airport? Suppose I'm a carrier. Because this virus, you can, you can carry it around for a, for a few days or weeks without being, um, without being tested positive. Yeah? T.F. Richard says, Barbados has selected the old submarine base in St. Catherine as its quarantine point. He goes on to say, Brian, don't forget that it is said that the plane that was denied here in Grenada went to Barbados also. 
inconsistencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Margaret says there are cases in Martinique, St. Martin, and the Dominican Republic. It's already here then. Go ahead. I say it's already here. We just we can't prove it. I, I'm, George, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing you clearly enough. No, you said it's already here, and I said we just can't prove it. No, we can't prove it, but um, it might be too late when we decide to prove it. As I say, I'm in a vulnerable group. And I imagine there are some other Grenadians in that, in, in, in those, that vulnerable group. I mean, we have things like medication for those people with a heart condition or those people who have to take blood pressure medication. Right now, there's a shortage of blood pressure medication on the island, I believe. The generic ones. So what's going to happen? So there is, it's you not know, just being my, tested uh, for the virus. My question code. to you is, okay, let's assume that tomorrow morning, government said to us, folks, we now have our first case of the virus. Mm. Um, you know, Grenadians, I mean, we, it doesn't take much to set us off, okay? What do you expect to see happen? What do you expect the reaction of Grenadians to be? Will it be, well, let's see how we can, you know, keep it down, keep the numbers down, or will it be more hysteria? I don't know, George. I really don't know. Um, you see, there's a stigma out there about um, the people who would who are carrying this virus, and, and I mean, we, we we look at people from a of, of a of a different. We look at the Chinese differently. Um, some people are complaining that they are that, that they are carriers. I I don't know, um, but we're not getting the the information that we need to make the right decisions. Let's put it that way. All right, all right. Let's not. Uh spend all our time on the uh, coronavirus no. there's something else i i really really want to hear your take on mr pitt the ongoing war between uh Grenelec and the government of grenada did you go to that consulate uh consultation uh, i think it was on tuesday yes i did yes i did george and you know there were more questions than answers at this three hour plus consultation. Um, we learned that it's a matter now of time before Grenlec officially recognized or, or its option of selling its shares to the government of Grenada. Um, that I understand is now in arbitration, binding arbitration, so when the decision comes out um, and the government has to come up with X amount of dollars to purchase uh, Grand Lake shares, then we will find out who the buyer is. But some in interesting things occurred to me at this, at this um, consultation, George. First, the minister announced that the, um, the consultation, there was, there was, um, uh, uh, what do you call it again? There, 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 was, there was some studies done in order to come up with this new regulation for the uh, uh, electrical, uh, the, the, the uh, electricity uh, service. Yeah? Um, so there were consultants hired to do this uh, to, to do this, this work. He said that the government had to borrow some money uh, from a source, he gave the source, and that money had to be paid back. But he also said there was some money from private sources for this consultant to come up with this paper. But he didn't mention who the, who the private sources were. And I found that kind of strange. I mean, if, if a private individual is gonna pay the consultants to do a report, then there's a reason for them to do that. 
Yes? Um, there were, I, I, how to put this? Consultations seem to be taking a different form these days. We were informed that all questions and answers would be responded to via email and not the night in question. So that you got up, you asked a question or you made a comment and they took notes and they were, they were going to communicate to the participants via email. I found that rather strange. You're kidding yes. me. Yes, yes, George. As a matter of fact, somebody asked the minister a question in regards to some disinformation that he was spreading in regards to rates. Yes? And he did not respond. Because the conclusion of this questioner was that the minister lied, basically, in order to get the people of Grenada on his side or to agree that um, Grenada was a bad company. That's the essence of, the, of, of what took place. But there was no response from the minister. And it had to do with rates. And I keep asking myself the question, What was George, the turnout, yeah, Brian? Brian? It was a good turnout. It was a good turnout. But it was a very, it's a highly technical three hours. I mean, there were a lot of technical information that um, the experts were giving out, which, you know, I, I felt at a loss to be quite honest with you. And I believe if this consultation continues in this form, in other parts of the island, the, the turnout might be getting smaller and smaller as they go along. Because it's, it was highly technical. Yes? You know, a lot of people just don't take these consultations uh, seriously anymore, especially uh, where the public looks forward to a chance to vent, if you will. I mean, look, just the other day, there was a, a press conference held by the Chinese, and the Chinese actually gave the media the questions that they should be asking. Um, so, I mean, why bother? Why bother? Look at what well, happened. George, I'm sure you remember very well what happened in the uh, run up to the uh, last referendum. A lot of consultations, but, George, but yeah, the people's but George, wishes this, just this, weren't respected. What say you? This consultation process is for us to put in place a regulatory authority for electricity. Yes? But there is a regulatory, or there should have been, or there, there should be a regulatory authority existing right now, you know. I don't know if you recall a few years ago, Grenlec wanted to increase their non-fuel charge. And they put an ad in the newspaper. No, the reason why they did that is because the board was no longer functioning. The regulatory authority that was supposed that they would have, would have applied to in order to raise the non-fuel charge. Now, I found out at this, at this, at this regulatory, at this meeting, uh, that the board did not function because the minister did not appoint a chairman. Yes? Now, under this, under this new regulation, George, almost everything has to go through the minister again. You know? The minister is responsible for the applications. The minister is responsible for licensing. Everything that, that the regulatory authority has to do in regards to electricity must go through the minister. He has the final say, or she, if the minister is a woman in the future. So why are we going through this process? Are we going to have a board set up again that would not function in a couple of years because the minister did not appoint a chairperson? You know, I get the impression, George, that this whole exercise is to serve one purpose and one purpose only. To convince the people of Grenada that to get rid of Grenland is justified because they are bad corporate citizens. Now, if that is the purpose, and we have a reliable source of electricity right now, we know who the suppliers are. They have brought us from a place um, that, that we were load shedding to a place where we have a reliable source. Who's going to come? Now, there were hints at this meeting that there are some Chinese involved. Eh? I mean, they didn't come out and say that, but um, there were some hints. 
What do we know about this company that is now going to? What do we know about the company that is now going to take over this this um, supply of electricity? Nada, nada. Couple of comments here from T.F. Richards. He says, Smokey's Calypso is playing out in our very eyes. Grenada for sale. He goes on to say, these consultations never make any sense to the public. This is due to the simple fact that the decisions are already made before the consultation. And that's absolutely true, Tia. He goes on to say, it's just to send the fools further on. Ryan says, who regulates the regulator of the regulatory committee? Any answer? The minister. Everything is in the hands of the minister, you know, George. Now, the, the chairman did assure the group at the beginning of this exercise that the consultant's report would not be taken on board as is if it's in violation of the Constitution, or if any article is in violation of the Constitution. Now, my question is, how would you know it's in violation of the Constitution if it's not tested in the court? Because that's why we go to court sometimes, eh, George? I mean, somebody does something to us, and um, we challenge it in the court because we believe it's unconstitutional. And then the court decides whether it's constitutional or not. Or not. But why would a consultant present a report without duly considering the constitution of the country. Yes? Uh, who, I mean, are we paying for this report? Well, you know, who else it, would it if was, not it, us? All right, Brian, listen, let's not, let's not exhaust this anymore. Yeah, Anything yeah, up yeah, your yeah. sleeve that you want to vent on before we hang up? No, George. Um, you know, let, let's 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 kind of keep it open. Um, I, I, we we have a kind of delay uh, going on right now. Sometimes I'm hearing you, and sometimes I'm not. All right. Margaret says, Brian, it won't be surprising that the buyers may be Chinese. It will fit the Chinese mo of seizing national assets for the so-called loans and aid they give to these countries. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it does. And I think, I think you, if you ask the average Grenadian um, on the street, they would probably agree with, uh, with Margaret that the buyer is going to be a Chinese company. Fits into the MO, like she says, yeah. All right, Mr. Pitt, this is where I'm going to bid you farewell and say thank you very much for... Uh, opining here this afternoon or this <laughs> this evening it's going to take a while to get used to that and uh i look forward to seeing you next friday sir if that's okay with you providing it's in the day george i hope the construction will be finished by your place boy let me tell you yesterday yesterday i was going ballistic here if i could have crawled under this desk i would have done just that have a nice evening george you too, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Brian. But then let's take a break and we shall return. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome
calling all vehicle owners. Inspection and licensing continues. And at Hubbard's, we want you to be ready. From February 16th to March 31st, registration numbers 2,501 to 5,000 with single registration letter. Or registration numbers 251 to 500 with plural registration letters will receive 11% off new torque tires and power max batteries. Don't get caught unprepared. Visit us today at the Motor Department in Mongay or the Tire Bay in Grand Nance near to the building supplies. Just let me say a quick hello to some of the folks out there tonight. Hello there, Ev. Where are you? Oakville? Hello, Ev. Ev McKinn. Mr. Anthony Charles is with us this evening. Uh, Ryan Jabon, Jillian Lambert, Lincoln Depperdine. Good evening, Mr. Depperdine. How are you, sir? Kennedy Phillip is there. Allison Tisha George, Derek Seeley, Margaret Redhead Fletcher, my goodness, the big guns are in the house. Mr. Peter Bishop is with us. Hey, Peter, I hope you didn't plan this. You know, Peter sent a little note in uh, one day this week saying that he was not going to be able to join us in the morning because he would be attending classes. And lo and behold, Yesterday morning was the last morning we did, for a little while anyway. We have, uh, tonight's our first time doing evenings. And by the way, speaking about evenings, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, not tomorrow night, I beg your pardon, next Thursday night at 8 o'clock, we will have Mickey Chat at 8. So we're probably, we're probably going to run uh, this program a little bit earlier, like maybe 7 o'clock or so. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Bradley Vesprey is there this evening, and so is dear Carly, his wife, his better half. Good day to Sunshine, Kathleen Thomas, good to see you guys. Anthea Rillo, say good night. <laughs> Anthea says, sure I missed my morning dose, but I'm in my PJs, ready and waiting. Ah, well, 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 well. I'm not going there. Pilgrims, let us take a look and by the way you know usually we run the national report on the morning following the evening it's released right but because of the time we're starting tonight we're late enough to get today's edition of the national report here goes Ministers and permanent secretaries working to improve implementation of major cabinet decisions. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, March 6, 2020, I am Rakesha St. Louis. Government ministers and permanent secretaries spent the day on Friday brainstorming ways as a team they can strengthen and improve the rate of implementation to boost the public sector and economic development. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell says an implementation deficit continues to plague government. He says for months projects have been in the pipeline, funds have been secured and they were not implemented. We cannot allow implementation deficit to continue to plague our government. This term, implementation deficit, which describes a lack of decisive action in, in, in introducing proposed measures for the express purpose of addressing obvious shortcomings in the economy and the society cannot be part of the legacy we all live for the future of our country. Dr. Mitchell stressed the importance of teamwork. 
he challenged the ministers and their respective permanent secretaries to build trust and better working relationships, which will trigger successes in achieving the country's development goals. It has proven that countries or organizations with a high level of trust and good relationships at the administrative level and management levels have had the most success in the implementation of policies. Colleagues, it hurts me and frustrates me when I see so many important opportunities as projects that affects the livelihood of our people are held up for no other reason sometimes is our own egos. Not necessarily the lack of resources. So many times things seem not to move, get stuck. Cabinet Secretary Mrs. Ruth Rao says government has been on the development path for years now with the establishment of the medium-term agenda and the National Sustainable Development Plan. Ms. Rouse explained that at the end of the workshop, each ministry will be expected to implement an action plan, which will be supervised by the Cabinet Secretariat. Towards the end of the day, you will be asking your ministry teams to develop an action plan with two or three game-changing steps that you will partner to implement within a specified time frame. This is a critical piece in ensuring the sustainability of the gains of this workshop. We cannot drop the ball on this one. The Cabinet Office accepts responsibility for monitoring the implementation of the action plans and transmitting reports to Cabinet and the Senior Managers Board. Diplomats visiting Grenada this week have commended the actions been taken at the ports of entry to help prevent the introduction of the novel coronavirus COVID-19 to the country. Although they represented different countries and institutions and had separate meetings with the Prime Minister, the diplomats seemed to share a unanimous view that they spoke when they spoke of the health screening and surveillance measures being implemented in Grenada. Pan American Health Organization and World Health Organization representative to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean countries, Dr. Itardis Gibre, head of the delegation of the European Union to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS CARICOM and CARIFORUM Ambassador Daniela Tramaser and Ambassador for the Federal Republic of Germany, Mrs. Jute Kognig, all confirmed having to go through the requisite screening at the port of entry. The diplomats detailed the screening process they went through on arrival at the Morris Bishop International Airport and commended the frontline staff for maintaining established procedures regardless of the stature of the visitor. The visiting officials said they were impressed with the measures and the fact that diplomats are also being screened illustrates that the proper due diligence has been done. They also commended Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell for his leadership on the matter and he in turn acknowledged the role of the Ministry of Health and other frontline staff for the effectiveness of the measures implemented thus far and for keeping the public abreast of related developments. Dr. Mitchell assured the visiting diplomats that Grenada will continue to be proactive in the fight against COVID-19 and pledge the country's ongoing commitment to work with regional and international partners in this effort. The Prime Minister is also demonstrating leadership through his actions and has instituted a no-handshake policy in keeping with the advice of health experts to use a different form of greeting as part of efforts to prevent the spread of the virus. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Grenada's number one track and field event is back. The Inter-Secondary School Championships is back at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. You must be there. Experience the intense rivalry between athletes of our secondary schools on the track and in the field. Blame yourself if you miss the first ever Republic Bank-sponsored Intercall 2020. Blame yourself if you miss a day of exciting action on the track. 
be there every day, day one, two, and three. The 53rd Intercall Championships takes place on March 31st, April 1st, and 2nd, starting at 9 a.m. each day. Come, let's celebrate the inaugural Republic Bank Intercall. Come out, families. Come out, past students. Come out, school-based supporters for the return of competition on the track and in the field because Intercall is... Welcome back. Eliminating all modes of violence against women and girls by 2030 is the main aim of the Spotlight Initiative, which saw the signing of the Grenada Country Program on Thursday. 2.2 million euros will be invested into the program as Grenada joins with other countries to eradicate the problem of violence. Minister for Social Development Honorable Delma Thomas expressed her appreciation for the investment by the European Union. As the Ministry of Social Development, as the government of Grenada, we want to thank the UN system for continuing to believing in us, for continuing to assisting us. We know that despite, apart from the Spotlight Initiative, Dr. Allies, we know that other funding will be coming our way and we will be working to capture those funding as a ministry to ensure that we protect children and we protect our people. So we look forward to implementation of the Spotlight Initiative and we look forward to continue working to eradicate gender-based violence among our people. Her Excellency Daniela Tramaser, head of the delegation of the European Union to Barbados, says that the initiative is of crucial importance to Grenada. We believe that the human rights are our fundamentals. The defense of human rights are our fundamentals of our society in what we believe. And the European Union has two big beliefs. One is peace, security, human rights, and the fact that we are all on this world planet to work together. That's why we defend, and we will always defend, multilateralism, the fight you know, against climate change, the fact that we have to remind ourselves that as human beings, we can't close our eyes. She thanks the government for their commitment on a global basis to ensure that the target is met. I want to particularly thank uh, the government of Grenada. You are our knight in the OECS to spread the word on this. Not the fight, not the violent fight, the peaceful fight. Finally, in the news, finalists for the Grenada National Wear Competition now have a May 4th deadline to present the finished product of their design to a panel of judges. 16 designers have submitted 22 designs of male casual and formal wear and female casual and formal wear. Five finalists on Tuesday were presented with funding to complete the designs. 1,000 EC dollars was presented to Jamela Douglas, Talisha Alexander, Vanel Coffey, Tamara Prosper, Duro Jarrell Langain Sampson, and Mary Joseph. The national wear is extremely important. We have the Olympics coming up. We have swimming competition. We have beauty competition out there. All these things are taking place. You have Dubai coming up in 2021, and Grenada will showcase its national wear in most, or not, if, if not all, of these. Um, event. That was CEO of the Cultural Foundation, Ms. Shoma Wells. The general public will also have a say in the final selection. On the way forward, they have been given one, uh, sorry, two months, uh, which will take them to the 4th of May to produce the garments. As of the month of April, we will be positioning the designs throughout the parishes so that the public can vote in on which one they would like to see as a final one because it is important that the public has a buy-in on what they're going to wear as the national wear. So in each parish, we will be putting up posters, also including Karakou and Piti Martinique. A total of $23,000 in prize money will be allocated to the first, second, and third place winners. This is the National Report for today, Friday, March 6th. Let's recap the top story. 
ministers and permanent secretaries working to improve implementation of major cabinet decisions. On behalf of the entire news team here at the Government Information Service, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. Grenada, that's going to take care of tonight's national uh, report from the Government Information Service. My dear friends, please, I have a huge favor to ask of you. Why did it have to happen on the first night that we did this program? I want you to hold on for a sec. There's something I want to share with you. But I also, before I do that, I want to go back to a comment that was made here um, by Deslin Johnson, pertaining to the conversation uh, Brian and I were having just a few minutes ago. Deslin says, the vendetta has been out for Grenlick a long time now with this administration. The NNP said Grenlick is making a killing. They don't have the money to buy Grenlick right now, so they will bring in the Chinese to put up the money. If that happens, when we can't pay back the Chinese, guess what? They will acquire the main artery of Grenada's electricity. Where have we heard that before? All right, friends, I have a heavy, heavy heart right now. At about 7 o'clock this evening, I received a phone call telling me that a good friend of mine was dead, had died. His name is Coleman Redhead. Coleman and I went to Presentation Brothers College together years and years ago. And we've been lifelong friends. While I was speaking to Brian, oh, what the person told me at 7 o'clock was that um, he didn't show up for work and uh, the people at his workplace went to his place to see what happened and they found the deceased body. While I was talking to Brian a little while ago, a phone call came in, which I ignored. But while you were listening to the national report, I returned that phone call. Happened to be another dear friend of mine, a gentleman by the name of uh, Russ Feeling. Russ is the owner of the True Blue Bay Resort. asking whether or not I had heard about Coleman. And I said, yes, I did. But any idea what happened? Turns out that he was murdered. Yeah. I haven't had any time to check out my uh, WhatsApp forum but I got a tip off a little while ago that uh, apparently um, 
he was found with injuries to his head and uh, the place was ransacked. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, do I hate to wrap up this broadcast on that note. What are we coming to in this place? God, help us. Help us. Okay, let's take a break and uh, I'll be back with a parting word from the Holy Scriptures. located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center. For over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery mat. I am, but didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. But oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Hey, Lynn. Hey, neighbor. Here's the bill I asked you to pay for me. How did you get your electricity bill to be so low? For one, we size our transformers just for what we need. And we unplug transformers, chargers, and other devices when they're not in use. We also replaced our light bulbs with LEDs. They burn less energy, right? Much less. I even replaced the seal on my refrigerator door to keep the cold air in. And Grenlec is always advising us not to open the fridge too often. That's right. And my family washes and irons in bulk. With fuel prices changing all the time, how do you know if it is working? We pay attention to the usage history table. Over time, our average usage has decreased. So while Grenada can't control fuel prices, I can conserve energy and save money. Grenlec. Energizing our Grenada. Alrighty, folks. Uh, just before our parting word, let me pay some more attention. I've been a little bit negligent tonight as far as uh, comments on social media were concerned, but 
Bear with me. Um, hang on a sec here. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Uh, Anthea Rollo is extending her condolences. She says it's truly heartbreaking. Kennedy Phillip, likewise, sad. My condolences, he said. And Judith Darlington says, hi, Jude. May his soul rest in peace. Margaret Francis says, nobody deserves that. Very sad indeed, to say the least, Mags. Ryan says, shocking news, George, about the demise of your school friend, Coleman. Heartfelt condolences to the family and friends. Carlene Vesper is also extending condolences. Deslin Johnson says, my condolences to you, George. Thank you, Deslin. Bradley Vesper, continued blessings and guidance. Keep going. My dear friends, here's your parting word from the Holy Scriptures tonight. First book of Peter, chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. After you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. First book of Peter, chapter 5, verses 8 to 11. Okay, pilgrims, that's going to do it for our first evening edition of uh, Good Day Grenada. And again, if you can come up with a new name, hey, 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 let me know on Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, email, whatever. Love to hear from you, please. Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, I'll be back in this chair with the next edition of Sundays with George Grant. Another interesting one, what can I tell you? God bless you, my friends. God bless you.